Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ning Xu. I'm a PhD student in University of Illinois. Our paper is called Deep Engine Mining, and uh, my collaborators uh, Adobe researcher Brian Price, Gao Cohen, and my advisor, Professor Thomas Huang. So separating an object from an image is a very important task for many conservation problems. However, it's usually not enough to just predict each pixel, whether it's a foreground or background, because usually each pixel is a, a blend of the foreground colors and background colors. So we need to know how much is from a foreground, how much is from background. And this problem is called uh, image mapping. And uh, this task is very useful for many applications. For example, we can compose the object onto a different background. We can also recover in the object. And uh, this is how the image matting problem is formulated. So each observed uh, pixel is a linear combination of foreground uh, colors and background colors. And so for each uh, observed pixel, we have three uh, uh, values, uh, red, blue, and green. So there are three equations. However, we have seven unknowns. Therefore, the problem is uh, highly under uh, constrained. So in order to solve the image matting problem in the natural, uh, in the natural image, so uh, people usually use some additional information called the map. In the map, we have absolute foreground, absolute background, and the unknown regions. And the algorithm only need to refer, uh, infer the result in the unknown regions. So many algorithms have been proposed in the past, and we want to test how well they perform on the image in the wild. For example, given this image and the map, so the four Pix, uh, four image uh, uh, in the left, uh, in the right, as a typical result for previous method. So we can say they uh, all produce uh, uh, very obvious blurry areas, some smearing or chunky artifacts. And if we want to composite the foreground onto a different background using such result, so this is the typical result that they look like. So we can say they are not very visually appealing. And uh, so, so previous methods just simply do not work on the image in the world. And uh, so they only work in very simple case, for example, very, sim uh, similar, uh, one very simple foreground uh, background colors. Therefore, our goal is we want to propose an uh, image matching algorithm that really works very well on the image in the world. And uh, matching algorithm can be categorized into several types. So many algorithms use propagation-based method, so they propagate the alpha value from the known region to unknown regions. The second type is sampling-based method, so they sample foreground background pixels uh, that best describes the color of a unknown uh, of a given unknown pixel, and uh, recently there are some deep learning based methods proposed. However, they do not uh, directly solve the image matching problem. For example, this paper they use a fully convolutional network structure. However, their input requires uh, uh, close form matching and can matching. Therefore, their network simply try to predict which algorithm produces better result. And uh, this algorithm in their final step, they try to solve the matting ablation, which is basically equivalent to closed form matting. And the role of deep learning here is to try to uh, predict a smart version of TriMap. And uh, so, so, uh, so why previous methods do not work on the image in the wild? So first, we think uh, the previous method primarily depend on color features. However, uh, the foreground and background colors in the image in the wild uh, are very complex, and uh, only using the color features often lead to the wrong solutions. Uh, incidentally, all previous methods do not keep poor using the structural information. For example, in the image, the hair of the score process very strong patterns, which, uh, which are very obviously very important cues for image matting problem. And uh, last but not least, they all depend on the alpha matting data set. So this data set is a great uh, contribution to image matting field. They, they really accelerate the research for image matting. However, uh, due to the difficulty of getting ground truth, uh, this, all these tr uh, images are taken uh, indoor uh, environment, and uh, they all have static scenes. So they, they are very different from the image in the wild. And uh, they only have 27 training image and eight test image. Therefore, making previous algorithm uh, easily or fit on this small scale data set. And we want to use deep learning to solve this uh, task. Uh, we believe that deep learning has the capacity to learn the low level structure information uh, automatically from the data, and we also think the capacity of deep learning understanding the high level uh, semantics and the objectness is also very useful for this image uh, matting problem. So in order to solve the difficulty of getting ground truth, we first get many images uh, like this, so with very simple background, uh, background colors, for example, just plain white. And we use uh, previous method to, uh, to get uh, accurate alpha values from this image because this image are very simple. And in our case, we use Photoshop. We also manually correct all the mistakes made by previous method in order to, make, uh, to have more accurate ground truth. 
And then we use color determination to get the pure foreground colors. And we just randomly composite the foreground into different background using the ground truth format. And in our data set, we have 495 unique objects. Each image is composited with 100 random images. Therefore, our data set is very diverse. For example, it has some simple images like this. They also have some hard case like this one. And uh, here is our network structure. Our net network consists of two stages. The first stage is called the matting encoder decoder stage. The second stage is called matting refinement stage. And uh, in the first stage, our input is the uh, image concatenated with a uh, with the tri map along the channel dimensions. So it's a four channel input. And the encoder decoder, uh, the encoder part is initialized with VGG16. And the decoder just try to get the full resolution result back. And we have two kind of loss. The first loss is a comparison between the predicted alpha values with the ground truth alpha values. And since we also have the ground truth foreground image and background image, we can compose these two images using the predicted alpha values and compare it with the ground truth RGB image patch. And the result from the first stage are already much better than previous method. However, uh, sometimes uh, they already produce some uh, a little bit blurry because because of the upsampling and downsampling uh, effect in the encoder decoder network. Therefore, we have additional uh, network, which is very simple, fully convolutional uh, net, uh, network. And its input is the concatenation of the image and uh, the predict alpha values. And uh, the output will be compared with the ground truth. Uh, we found that uh, the result from a second state usually produce sharper, more accurate results. Next, I will discuss about the results. So we first evaluate our models on the alpha mating benchmark. So at the time of submission, our result ranked the first place. And it also achieved uh, five out of eight images, uh, achieved the best result on five out of eight images. And our focus is not just this small scale data set. We want our model to work better on more images and the images in the world. Therefore, we test our uh, model also on our own test data set. So following the same operation to, uh, to get our training data set, we also create a test set. So our test set have 50 unique objects, each is composited with 20 random images. And uh, we compare with previous seven state-of-art results. We also do ablation study to evaluate each component of our algorithm. And uh, finally, our full network achieves the best result. So for more detail about, about our ablation study, uh, you are welcome to our posters. And another common problem for pre matching algorithm is that they, they are very sensitive to tri-map placement, which means uh, if the tri-map have a larger and regions, they usually produce a uh, worse result. For example, in this one, we have the image on ground truth. We randomly dilate ground truth into a tri-map, and in this case, it's four pixels. And we use the close formatting to get the predict, uh, prediction result. And if I dilate this uh, ground truth more with, for example, 10 pixels, so you can see they get a worse result. And if, we, if I uh, dilate more, even more, with 19 pixels, they get, uh, they get a worse result. So let me do this back and forth several times so you can see the difference. And this is the same for another algorithm called DCN Manti. So with increasing level of trimap dilations, the result got worse. Uh, however, our results uh, uh, perform consistently well with different level of trimap dilations. So this is because our model understands the semantics very well. And it's also trained with different level of trimap dilations. Therefore, it's, uh, not very, it's uh, insensitive to the trimap replacement. So here is a more quantitative uh, evaluation of all the methods uh, under different level of trimap dilations. It's obvious that our model uh, remains very low SAD errors with uh, increasing level of trimap dilation, while the others just uh, degrade very quickly. We also create a test set with 31 images in the wild. And uh, we ask a user, we do user study and ask a user to uh, evaluate which method produces better result. So in the table, we have, uh, so each column shows the user preference of one method over the others. For example, when compare our method with shared matting, our method is uh, preferred by users 83% 80, of the time. So it's obvious that our method is preferred more by the users than the other method. And uh, we also evaluate our model on the video, ma video matching benchmark, even though our model is only trained on images. And uh, our model uh, achieves the best result under all trim uh, types and all evaluation metrics. So that also demonstrates the gen generalization of our ma models. So finally, I want to show some visual results. Uh, given the image, given the ground truth, I randomly dilate ground truth into a trim map and I use different methods to produce uh, alpha, uh, alpha evaluations. 
so, so in this example, the foreground, background color have very low contrast, and all pure methods have obvious uh, blurry areas, and uh, here is our result. So it produces much sharper and uh, more, much uh, accurate uh, alpha estimations. And uh, in this case, the trimap have a uh, very large general regions, and it's very difficult for previous method to sample use, useful information. And uh, therefore, they, just, they all fail. And uh, here's our result. So uh, our result got better result because our model got a better result because our model understands semantics well and uh, it also learns the uh, low-level structure information directly from the data. So in the extreme case, the trimap doesn't have any unknown regions, doesn't have any known foreground regions, and all peers method just get nothing, and here's our result. So, so that's also the similar reasons for the better performance. And uh, similarly for this transparent case, our results still get better, uh, our models still get better results. And uh, remember this image I showed in the beginning of the presentation, so all peers method get very bad results, and uh, here's our result. So for more information about our method, data set, or results, please come to our post 34. And thank you very much for your attention.